Hi, Tony Kashawi here coming to you with another tip and trick. Or well, actually it's not tips and tricks today. I'm actually analyzing a clown routine. It's a Russian troupe. I think they're called Lyceum Theatre. And um, they're obviously a part of a, a larger show because they're on a large stage and it's just one skit in the middle of a, a large production, where I guess with a larger cast as well. Now the reason why I like this particular clown skit is that they are presenting a, a routine, a, a dance routine to a bit of music they found, but it's the entrance and the exit, which is the clowning. So let's get started by just watching the routine first, and then we'll go and through and step by step and watch the whole clown routine. So there we have it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Well, I mean, that's just a bit of choreography. It's not much clowning there. I guess, well, there is, <laughs> there's a good punchline at the end. Um, so th these are, I think these are students of the Slava uh, clown legend. Um, I'm sure they're um, uh, full-time company members now. But that was Felix, Olga, and Elena. Now, what I'd like to do is look at the whole routine. The entrance and the exit uh, is all part of the clowning around. And then they get to do their performance, of course, the rehearsed choreographed piece that they did just in then. So the most important thing is how they have built up their little, what I call games. It's the game of the moving the hand, the game of the pushing the glasses. You'll, you'll see what I mean when we go through it. So please indulge me as I stop and start their routine and then I will play it in its whole entirety <laughs> um, hopefully to, for you to enjoy. Okay, so let's go through and have a look at the whole routine. I'm mean, sorry, uh, the very entrance. Oh, before I press play, um, when I'm teaching Comedia, I find that students tend to, you know, they put on their mask and they're in their character, they've been doing a lot of practice with their character, and then the troop of three or four uh, of uh, Zannis come out and they all try to get the audience's attention all at once. And of course, they're coming from the side, they're coming up the middle and they're trying to work the audience. The audience doesn't know where to look. It's like a three ring circus. Everything is happening all at once. They're doing cartwheels and trying to get attention. This doesn't work because it's just an onslaught of uh, characters. So I devised this little exercise called um, uh, <laughs> spatial relationship improvisation, where I tried to get the students through my frustration as a teacher. <laughs> I tried to get the students to actually come out one at a time. So if there was four uh, behind, the, behind the scene, behind the curtain, I'd give them numbers. I'd say, okay, lift up your mask. Here's your instructions. I say, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four, and you are to come out in that order. When number one comes out, they're to find a place on the stage could be front and center, it could be left, it could be the back. And then once they found their spot, they can just stay there. And then number two can come out. And number two comes out and finds a spot on the stage where they feel comfortable or their character has explored in relationship to number one who's already on there. So you get what I mean? So number three comes out, number four comes out. Why do we do this? Is because the audience gets to be introduced to each character. Because, you know, obviously the masks are uh, characterizations, they're individual uh, traits. And the audience likes to see them. And there's nothing better than to have spatial relationship. Like one clown, one mask might come out and stand right next to the one who's already out there. Or they might choose to stand further away. And this sets up 
an attitude, or not an attitude, but a, a relationship between the two characters that are on stage. The audience reads it, then number three comes out, then number four, and then their skit can begin. Or at least in my case, just the improvisations. Okay, <laughs> so after that introduction, let's have a look at the very beginning of this clown skit. Okay, I'll stop it there because they're moving into another part of their routine. So that is a very good example, if you wanted to use this uh, video clip, to show the students how the uh, spatial relationship exercise work as an introduction to your characters when you first appear. Of course, this can be done quicker, it can be done spatial like the uh, skit here, but the, the most important thing is that the audience get to see the character. Okay, so when number one came on, she stood in the middle, she was holding her dress. They could see that she was slightly timid. <clears throat> number two came in from the uh, left-hand side there and uh, showed the audience her attitude a little bit, um, you know, awkward, touching her glasses. And then number three comes marching in straight from the back up to the front. So you could actually see there a pecking order, you know, uh, in, in order. So it's one, the guy in the middle, uh, two is the one with the, <laughs> with the dress, and uh, number three, of course, the low status, the smallest one, with a sort of beanie on. Okay, let's continue to enjoy their performance. Okay, let's stop it there. So you can see that the, the, the hand holding and squeezing is something that I imagine this came out of an improvisation uh, whilst they're, you know, rehearsing. And if I was their director and they did something like this, and I would say, keep that in. You know, that's, that's how you discover uh, your bits of business. Uh, if you have fun doing it, you know, <laughs> and then the high status one, the, the one in the middle, uh, I'm calling him high status, but he comes back in and he gets his revenge. And of course, you could see the reaction from the other two. And now they've moved on in their structure to uh, start uh, what they planned to do when they came out, which is doing the song. So the very first little mini tambourine has been pulled out. So this is where they're going. Let's watch what happens next. Okay, let's pause it there. Did you notice? Of course, the, the gag of the uh, toilet plunger <laughs> was, was something ridiculous, of course. So, you know, so clowns are frightened of strange things. And, of course, screaming, throwing it away. But you just see how they uh, all looked at it and, you know, in amazement, like, what is this thing? But then when the uh, number two clown pulled out the maracas, which he was supposed to pull out, uh, they, they, he looks at it, he looks at the plunger, and then he looks back at the maracas and sort of say, 
you know, how the hell did I get these mixed up? And this clocking the audience is something that I, I should bring to attention, uh, where the clown looks at the audience as some kind of approval or uh, justification of saying, look what I'm experiencing. Did you see that? Did you see what I just saw? Did you just experience what I just experienced? So this clocking the audience is bringing the audience into the world of this crazy uh, characters of these clowns. As you can see, they're um, afraid of, of a plunger. It's a crazy world that they live in. And of course, the last little bit of business was uh, pushing up the glasses. And this is where you can see the, uh, the different pecking order of these three. It's the one in the middle uh, pushes his glasses up and then the one on his, his right, he, he or she, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I should apologize. I don't know whether that's male or female. And pushes his up and then the high status does it in return. And then finally he looks at her and she gives a little reaction like, like, yeah, okay, I acknowledge you, you, you're the, you're the boss. And then he quickly looks at the other clown, the one on his left, and she immediately looks forward, doesn't even want to challenge the uh, number one in the troupe. So the, all this, all this material, all this stuff is in there. And, and as an audience member, you don't probably analyze it as much as I do, <laughs> but the audience feels it. They can see and they feel and they understand what's going on in the minds of these crazy individuals. Let's continue. Okay, that little bit of business, maraca shaking. Um, I guess if they were to uh, write this down, they would have sections. Okay, the entrance, the, the squeezing of the hands, uh, the pulling out of the maracas, throwing the thing. And you know, that would be their structure. Because there's no dialogue, of course, you have to write it down. Sometimes it might be even easy to do it like a film script. You know, how they have a, a, a picture board of the scenes that they're going to do. So that's when they know that they're actually building their structure, they're actually getting through their routine, they're going through their bits of business. Some nights the audience find one little bit hilarious and then the next night they don't get a titter. And that's what you get from uh, you know doing your clown routine uh, night after night. It, it gets better or you add a little bit of something that you didn't think was gonna get a laugh and it gets a laugh and all, all of a sudden, the director or even the, the members of the troupe will say, we'll do that again. <laughs> and that's how you build up your clown routine. Okay, so just that little, I just want to acknowledge the little bit of business that the number three clown did. <clears throat> she brought up the maraca and kept going. Uh, number one pushed it down and it came back up and pushed it down again. And then she attempted to do it and then put it back herself. All this kind of stuff is like, maybe they played around with this for too long. And maybe the director said, ah, uh, that's enough. Don't overdo it in that little bit of uh, business because they've got to move on to the, to the, through the skit. So um, you'll notice that was in threes as well. We're talking about the rule of three. Let's continue. <laughs>
Okay, let's stop it there. Okay, so that was the song. Uh, that's their routine uh, the, uh, done, or should I say that's what they came out to do. They've done their little musical dance choreography, and now they're doing their exit. You'll notice there that uh, number three had uh, her beanie pulled over her eyes, and of course she went for a wander around uh, being blind, and the high status called her back by making sounds. So she uh, obviously followed the sound of her leader, and went to him and of course they did that little trick where instead of just lifting up the beanie so that you can see he has a unique way of uh, pulling the beanie back so she can see again nearly pulling her head off backwards so everything is exaggerated I guess you could say and then of course they were in the predicament where they were stretched across all three um, not knowing what to do with their blind friend and then, of course, the last little bit, I'm not too sure whether we, you caught it, but when they actually were very in close proximity and they come face to face, they had a little sort of shock jumping back. So the high status one did it and then the two low status ones did it. So continuing a theme. OK, let's watch it towards the end. Okay, just one little mention here. I know you want to probably see the whole thing. I'm, I'm sorry I keep interrupting. But did you notice the, uh, the, the middle clown came out and he crossed his arms uh, to grab the hands, which is a, a recurring theme. And of course, it confused the hell out of the, his two uh, helpers. Uh, they didn't know where to put it. Now, they were just putting their hands through, trying to even under a leg and around. And that. I called this uh, the finding the hands game. If I was their director, I'd say, yeah, that's good. You're playing at the moment with just trying to make different shapes and playing with trying to find the hands. And of course, the skit comes to an end when a leg is thrown into the works. And as you can see, it, um, it came to an end. Just a nice bit of business, bit of mucking around. And now you can see the leader, he's holding out his hands to... Um, to do the final uh, bow, I think this is what they're doing right now. So watch what happens. Okay, so there we have the complete clown uh, routine, uh, Mama, Bahama Mama, um, not too sure what that song is. So, and in Russia, they, the tradition is that they do clap uh, uh, in, in time. Uh, I, here we just sort of make noise randomly, but in Russia they clap in time if they enjoy the performance. Okay, so that's the, the analyzation, the breakdown of a clown skit. What is clowning? It's finding the fun, is what I think it is. Yes, you have an idea. The idea is they're going to go out there and do a little dance routine to Mama uh, Bahama Mama song. But the entrance, uh, the, 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 the establishing the characters, and then so you know, going through, finding the little games, as I said before, the glasses game, uh, the, um, the hands through the arms game, all of these is the clowning. It's the, it's the most entertaining part of the whole thing. I mean, like the dance routine they do, it's just a bit of choreography. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this wasn't too taxing. Thank you very much and ciao, ciao. See you in another video that I might make on Comedia and Mask.